Um, all right, so how's everybody doing on your fast? You good? Amen. I'm telling you, we're in exciting times, but God is preparing us. And so I have a, a, a strong word today, but it's a God word. But before I do that, I, I, did you all get a handout when you came in? If you didn't, we probably have more back there. But this is really important, and we use this a lot in, in, when we're doing ministry. And Betsy and Chester Kilstra really put it together. But um, I just kind of put mine together here. So I just wanted to quickly go over it because this is really key. I'm talking about overcoming fear. You know, we know that um, we're entering into a season. We've heard about all the shakings, right? And God is saying, get ready. There's a new pandemic, right, that they're planning again. And I'll talk a little bit about that. But are we going to walk in fear? What does the word of God teach about fear? All right. And so it's a time to really build up our spiritual immune system. But in order to do that, you have to understand, I'm not talking about just memorizing and quoting scripture, although that's important. But if you have some ungodly beliefs that will hinder you from really allowing the word to metastasize within you, you're going to have a problem. And so in this here on the handout, I have here, and this is important for our fast, okay, because we want to shift. We don't want to walk into this new season with the same mindsets that's going to limit us. Our belief systems include our beliefs, our decisions, our attitudes, judgments, expectations, vows, and oaths, all right? So here, any beliefs that agree with God, his word, his nature, his character, they're godly beliefs, okay? And we know we believe it's so easy for us to believe a lot of lies. But any beliefs that don't agree with God, his word, his nature, his character, they contribute to our ungodly beliefs. For example, I'm stupid. I'll always battle with this. I'll always battle with confusion. I'm always going to struggle with addiction. I'm always going to struggle with, you know, come on. These are ungodly beliefs because God came to set us free. Our beliefs affect who we are and how we perceive ourselves and how we relate to others. They determine how Christ-like we become. And I'm kind of skimming through this. The perfect ungodly belief is one that appears to be absolutely true based on the facts of our experience, and yet it's absolutely false based on God's word. How many of you realize when you're struggling with a belief system, it seems so real to you? The lie is... You know, these people are too fanatic. I can never be like them. I can never grow in Jesus like these people. I can never uh, not walk in fear. I can never attain that. I can't be successful. I can't understand that word. I can't do well in school. You see, those are all lies. That's because according to the word, Jesus came to set us free, and the word is supernatural and it's powerful, okay? So what are some of the lies? No one loves me. I'm all alone. I'm defective. You know, I'll always be a failure. See, these are lies that we have to shift, and it's progressive, and it takes time for us to, to uh, walk out of this. But I'm telling you, when you're desperate and you want change, you're going to do what it takes, because that's what I did. I couldn't stand the way I was. And so it says, although these statements are completely false, most people who think this way do not even realize it until ungodly belief is pointed out to us. We continue day after day living our life based on a lie. We were singing songs about the cross. Why did Jesus die for us? To live in bondage? When we finally recognize an ungodly belief, we realize how completely at odds it is with God's word. So in John 8, clearly warns us that Satan's a liar. That's his character, and he hates truth. Exposing ungodly beliefs exposes Satan's continuous attempts to drive us away from truth, which states that we are his beloved children. All right, so, all right, quickly, how do we form these? Well, we inherit wrong beliefs from our family or friends. There are lies that have been formed in us since childhood about ourselves and others and God. They're formed out of experiences. Beliefs are formed from hurts, traumas, negative experiences, and words people say to us. But Jesus came to set us free. Amen? Amen. Beliefs are formed from the facts of our experience. An ungodly belief is a belief or an attitude that doesn't agree with the word. End of conversation. The most tragic ungodly belief Satan has introduced to this generation is you came from nothing. Uh, if, you are, if you think you want to be a boy and you're a girl, you can shift genders. That's a lie, all right? You have no reason to live. Commit suicide. Die. 
okay? You're this, you're that. You'll never acquire uh, anything that God has for you. You're never going to exceed. You know, what the, what the world is trying to, um, you know, encourage our young people and what the world is teaching is a lie. And that's why you have to know what the Word of God teaches. And so we can't just cower and just say, oh, well, here's what they're teaching. Look at what they're trying to teach in the school system. It's a lie. They're trying to teach perversion in the school system. It's a lie. Trying to why? Because they want to start very young and twist the minds of these kids. Okay. So some, some results of ungodly beliefs sets us up for unhappy relationships, causes distortion so that we make mountain out of molehills, causes us to take everything personal. You're ultra sensitive. Listen, if you're a, you have a problem that you're always so sensitive and getting offended by someone, that shows you there's a root issue there that you need healing. All right, it causes us to be prisoner, to put down our sarcasm, anger, or any other unhealthy patterns of relating. Causes us to hurt and defile those we love. Causes us to, our faith to be eroded. It undermines our relationship with God. And you can read on. So the belief expectation cycle. To better understand the belief expectation cycle, consider this, experience. This happened to me. Your teacher embarrasses you in school in front of others, right? They, they shame you. Not intentionally. I mean, it was just, you know, how it was then, right? They shame you. You're, so then what your belief starts happening, I'm not smart. I'm never going to speak in front of people again. I'm never going to share my heart, right? But teachers are mean or parental or, or, or uh, authority figures are mean. I'm not, I'm not messing with them right? The expectation now is I'm stupid and I will always be treated that way and people will see me as stupid. Or your behavior then becomes um, refusal to study. What's the point of studying? Because I'm stupid. Anybody relate? Not, not necessarily to that, but I'm just saying the cycle. All right. So anyway, how do we stop belief, that belief system? All right. Expectation cycle is to intervene between the experience and belief stages of the cycle. And we have to choose God's word as truth. We replace the old lie with God's truth. And I tell you, a lot of times as you're doing it, it doesn't make sense. It's like, okay, this feels so real. This feels so real. I have experiences. Well, your, your expectations shall not be cut off. You're constantly expecting to be put down. There's like what we call expected rejection, perceived rejection. And it's like this dynamic in the spirit realm where you would track that. Okay. And so, um, Anyway, so we have to establish a belief cycle. So I want you to be thinking about what are some cycles, belief cycles that you're believing that's contrary to the word of God, all right? So breaking free of ungodly beliefs. How do we stop thinking this way? Well, you hear us saying that all the time. Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, don't be the way the world is and don't think the way the world thinks, but be transformed into the image of Christ. How? By the renewing of your mind. And how do you do that? When you, now, this is what they had written. When you think your brain generates electrical energy that travels from neuron to neuron, as these electrical pulses travel across your brain, the neurons involved develop more and creating a pathway that's ever uh, more easier for the electric pulses to follow. Thus, your brain develops a system of trails or highways, or you think a thought over and over again until it becomes a deep rut. So let me put it to you this way. You know when you have a rut carpet and you have furniture on the carpet, you move the carpet and you have that indentation in the carpet. Well, one of the ways to get that indentation now is pour water on it, keep water on it, put, keep pouring water on it, and water, it represents the Word of God. And so there's, a, there's a, an indentation, there's, a, there's a, tr a pathway in our brain that we have to shift. And God gives us that ability through supernatural power, through the Word of God, which is supernatural. It's not in any regular book. It's a word that Jesus came to set us free, and he's saying, listen, we're living beneath our means. What does the Word say about your situation? That has final say, not depression, not fear, not anger, not addictions, not porn. The word has final say. And when you get that, when you, when you get that and that root system becomes so, so, so rich in you, you become so one with it. 
Man, that's how you overthrow the works of the enemy. And we don't have to wait 42 years for it. He, he meets us little at a time, step by step, but do it. Uh, listen, I'm telling you, we're coming into a season that there is a lot of shaking that's going to be happening. However, God called us to be here for such a time as this because he knows we can endure. He knows we have that ability. We have the spirit of the living God, and we are that remnant, and we are that army. So anyway, then it goes on to say here, take, you can take time to read it. It says, uh, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 and 5 instructs us to pull down, tear down every thought that's against God. Ungodly beliefs are not God's thoughts. And the battleground is in the mind. We all know that, right? So ungodly beliefs are open doors inviting Satan to come in and kick our behinds. That's bottom line. If we don't reject Satan's lies, then we, then, uh, we have to accept them as truth. And like I always say, whose voice is louder? What is Satan saying about you? He's not gonna he's not gonna dictate my destiny. That's what he's been doing. Isn't it awful to think that we're believing and trusting what Satan says about us more than what God says about us? He's a liar. That's what the Bible says. He's the father of lies. So listen to this. Because I want to get on with my message. So at the end of your handout, it says here a belief system. The, it's, the author of this was anonymous. It says, if you accept a belief, you reap a thought. If you sow a thought, you reap an attitude. You have to meditate on some of this stuff. If you sow an attitude, you reap an action. If you sow an action, you reap a habit. If you sow a habit, you reap a character. And if you sow a character, you reap a destiny. Wow. So take your time with this because, again, we're fasting. We're fasting for freedom. We're fasting to build up our spiritual immune system. We're fasting so that we are prepared for what's ahead because Jesus wants us to walk as, you know, and be that army that he's called us to, to fight and to take a stand. So we are in, the, we're entering into, and in, I think it's uh, September 14th or 15th, 5784, which you heard, Christine, it's the year of the door. But we're still in the era of pay. So it's pay, P-E-Y, which represents the mouth, pay Dalit, all right, a open door. All right, it's a decade of pay. And we're to call those things which be not as though they are. We're to prophesy. We're to speak the word. We're to decree the word. And when you walk in faith, I'm telling you, there's spiritual dynamics that take place in the realm of the spirit. But see, if when we have an ungodly belief that's countering, saying, that's ridiculous. Like, like, that might work for you, but it won't work for me. That's a lie. God is saying that he's there for you and that he, we have his DNA and we have the spirit of God within us. Amen? So we see that. Oh, I'm, all right. Well, I wasn't going to go there, but I'll go there now in a minute. So we, you know, and I've been encouraging, we've been encouraging everybody to pray in the spirit because you get revelation. It just, it just does something for you, right? So anyway, um, uh, let's see. So we want to call those things in Romans, it says, we pray and we decree. We call those things which mean as though they are. You know, the vision that God has given me, he said, your mandate, Tricia and Peter, is to raise up a militant army. And that's the remnant. That's the Gideon 300 army. That's the army that knows how to stand. And when you've done all to stand, you stand. And when you've done all to stand, to stand, to stand, you stand and you stand and you don't back down. That's the army. We're not cowering. It's not like, you know, we're this radical group that we're going to, like, you know, be a terrorist, even though they call us domestic terrorists. We're a terrorist against the enemy in the realm of the spirit. And when he knows, see, that's what, why does he come against us so often with meditating on the word, with worship, with decreeing the word, with taking a stand? Why? Because he, he knows these are the weapons the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they're mighty through God, through the pulling down of stronghold. Man, we have, to, we have to stand on that. We meditate on that. We worship God. We build up our immune system. We are so one with the Lord that you can't tell me anything different. That's what he's after. But if we, we are listening to the lies that said, nah, I don't know. She's a little too radical, a little too radical. You know, she's full of baloney. Don't listen to her. I mean, my God, these Christians that are so fanatical. Well, honey, either you're hot or you're cold. That's what the Bible says. If you're lukewarm, what does he say? I'll spit you out of my mouth. So God wants us to be that ferocious, warring, you know, lion-like, you know, group of people with the force of God. 
Don't listen to the lie that you're defeated. Don't listen to the lie that you'll never get ahead or you're always struggling with porn or you're always going to be depressed. That's baloney. Now, I'm not saying there's not an issue. And God allows us to address the issues of our belief system. But God says, I, Jesus died on the cross brutally so that we can walk in freedom. So there's a year, you know, it's always been a year, but we decree and we, we, we release the declarations. We prophesy. We speak those things daily out loud. It's the fruit of our mouth needs to manifest. We will see the evidence of faith. All right? So the number four is door, but it's also a new season or a time period where God changes the times and seasons. Right? And that's what's happening now. So delete, it's the Hebraic uh, uh, alphabet. It's the picture of the door, but also it's like what I was looking up. It's really, at the time, they didn't have doors so much like in the desert. There was tent. In order to get into the tent, they had to humble them. They had to bow. And so it's really important that we all walk in humility. It's always been, but we really need to humble ourselves. Give up our right to be right. Humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, okay? And it also means... Um, it's a dwelling place, right? So God, to me, God is talking about that intimate place. You hear us saying all the time, but during this fast, are we spending that intimate time with the Lord? Are we dialoguing? Are we just, we were praying this morning about distractions. Are, are you like in a place where you're just sitting there and waiting upon the Lord? We can't afford not to do this, all right? We have the power and the authority to open doors, and to shut them. I mean, God will open up doors. But let me tell you something. Our mouth can shut doors. You know, I was thinking of in the book of Daniel when, it, when the angel said to Daniel, you know, he was praying 21 days and there were delays. But he said, the angel came and he said, I came, what? Because of your words. Where are the angels coming because of your words? Or are they saying, oh, Lord Jesus, here we go again. You know, what are the angels saying when they hear you speak? Because they're ministering servants. We don't pray to angels, but they respond. Psalm 103.20 says that the angels hearken to the voice of the word of God. When we are releasing the word of God in faith, they're sent out to, as ministers on our behalf, to war on our behalf. I don't know about you, but I want my angels on my side. So doors that, uh, you know, we have to activate them with our mouth. We, I'm telling you. A lot of us are from the Italian background. I, I mean, you Hispanics are up there too. I guess everybody is up there. Do we know how to complain or what? We didn't have to go to school for that. It's just instinctive. We are good at it. We have black belts in complaining. And so even during this fast, we need to what? Fast our mouths, fast, fast the complaining and the murmuring and always having something ne negative to say. So. Watch what you're saying. We're sneered by the words of our mouth is what the Bible says. Life and death are in the power of our tongue, right? So we have to speak things into existence. And praise opens up doors. Praise is key. Praise is wonderful. And so some of the, some of the uh, names or some of the things uh, that you can study during this time, um, it, from, from uh, 5784, the Dalit word, what would be a Dalit word would be Daniel. Daniel is one of the Dalit words that, that is really key figures during this 5784 season. All right, so I love, the book, I love to study the book of Daniel, and it, to me it represents prayer. But also, here's the thing in the season that we're in, Daniel prayed, and he's like, I am bound to what you're saying. They told him he couldn't pray, sort of like when we had the, thing, you know, yeah, every now and then. We could. He prayed, and not only did he pray, he opened up the windows. I'm going to pray, and you're not telling me what to do. The devil in the world is not telling me what to do when it comes to my God. And so, now, was there a little shaking that took place? Yeah, because they threw him into the lion's den. But the Lord shut the mouth of the enemy. He shut the lion's mouth. See, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. See, God is raising up this firebrand. He's raising up this tongue-talking, fire-breathing Christian that's not backing down, that loves, that's walking in love. Now, I'm not talking about being self-righteous and pointing your finger and being mean-spirited to people. I'm talking about who know their God and will do great exploits. We're all called to do that. That's not just for a group of people. We're all called to lay hands on the sick. We're all called to cast out devils, raise the dead, and heal them and cleanse the leopard. That's our mandate. So 
The other one that, uh, the other name, so it's, it's Daniel, Deborah, Dagon. We're in the season. We're going to deal with the Philistine gods. We're going to deal with the, uh, uh, the gods of this age. You know, um, oh, I forget his name. Uh, that rabbi, Jonathan Kahn, wrote a book about, um, I think it was called The Gods of This Age, something like that. So we're dealing with, this is legitimate stuff. You know, for those of you that travel overseas, the, the people in Africa, people in Brazil that I've been to, in different China, different countries I've been in, they don't have a problem believing in the supernatural realm. They don't have a problem believing in the demonic realm either. Here in America, we try to, you know, uh, intellectualize everything. Read the book. And you'll see, life and death are in the power of a tongue. There's good, there's evil, there's light, there's darkness. The Bible talks clearly about it. And we have to know how to stand and fight. And we have the authority, we have the power of the blood of Jesus in us that overthrows the works of the enemy. And I'm not talking about being a carnal Christian. Honey, we can't be straddling the fence. It's you're in or you're out. And that's just what the Word of God teaches because you are going to get destroyed. And I'm not trying to insult anybody here. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm so concerned about all of our, where we're at. And I said, Lord, check my heart. I don't want to be deceived. It is so easy to be deceived. Now, I'm not talking about living in fear either. But when you're in the presence of the Lord, he has no problem showing you. <laughs> Trust me. So, like Daniel knew, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh, I love that. When Nebuchadnezzar said, you're not bowing to me. And he said, no, I'm not, we're not bowing. And even if our God doesn't save us, we're still not bowing to you. They were thrown into the fire, but there was a fourth man in the fire. See, that's the position we have to take. I am not bowing to the world system and the, corru the, the corruption that's out there and what the enemy's trying to implement and we're going to cower, the church, the ecclesia, the one who is to legislate. We are not supposed to bow to that. We're the light. They are really looking for us to take a stand and say, do you have hope? Do you have the truth that I need? Do you have the wisdom that I need? That's what they're looking for. Not for us to say, yeah, well, what are we going to do? Oh, well, I don't want to get them upset. I'm sick and tired of hearing about us offending them. What about them offending me and my position in Christ? You know, it's like, oh, my God, we, well, we don't want to offend them. We can't get too wild with Jesus. Well, honey, it was that the, I got wild with Jesus that set me free. And so that's what the word is saying. And, and David is another Dalit word. And David was a worship warrior. And I'm telling you, I was reading it this morning. I don't have this in any of my notes because I changed it. Sorry. Um, but I was this morning, I was just worshiping the Lord. And, and the Lord brought me to 1 Samuel. And he said, look at this, uh, this kid, a young kid. God is raising up the young ones too. He's raising you up where you're not bowing your feet either. You're not bowing your knee. And in 1 Samuel 17, you know, Goliath, what was he doing? He was taunting the enemy. He was taunting them. He was lying to them. He was saying, who are you? Who are you? I'm a giant. Well, guess what? God has called us to take out the giant because we have the DNA of Christ in us. And so in 1 Samuel 17, 11, the Philistine Goliath declared this day, this is what he's saying. See, the mouth. Listen to how the enemy will speak as well. This day, I defy the armies of God. Well, I say this day, we defy the armies of the enemy. And it says, give me a man and let us fight together. And on hearing these words, this is what the word of God says. Saul and Israel were terrified. We cannot be walking in fear in this season. That's not our who we are. They were afraid, and they lost their faith in God's covenant promises. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, you're my God, my strength, and my refuge. In you will I trust. Though, you know, it said, what does it say? Though a thousand fall at my side, ten thousand on my right hand, it will not come nigh my dwelling. Listen, I believe the word. You have to become so one and so united with the word that it doesn't matter what they're saying. And I'm not saying that you don't get scared it's like that that it's so weird because there are times when you just like Ugh! you know you're taking such a stand but yet inside you have agita us Italians we know what that means we're, we feel like we're just being stretched and you know we're getting nervous but I'm not bowing don't you think Shadrach Meshach and Abednego got nervous 
Don't you think that Daniel got nervous when he was thrown? He said, I'm not bowing. I am not bowing to what this world is saying. And people are looking for us. They want us to take a stand. So listen to this. So in 1 Samuel 17, oh, I love this. David's watching all this, and he's like, what's up with that? And, you know, his brothers are aggravated. Because, listen, when you take a stand in faith, people get mad. But you know what? It is what it is. That's not my problem. You take a stand for Jesus. You take a stand for Jesus. And so, uh, you know, and Saul was telling him, look, you can't do it. You know, here, let me give you my armor. So you have to have your own revelation, your own intimate walk with God, that he will give you this strategy. I can't do what Peter does. He can't do what I do. You can't do what I do. It's your own revelation. In your intimacy with the Lord that the Spirit of God shows you. And so he says here, David told the Philistine, you come to me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come to you in the name of Yahweh Sabaoth. That's the Lord God of the angel armies. He knew he had the angels with him. The Elohim of the army of Israel, whom you have insulted. Today, Yahweh will hand you over to me. I will strike you down and cut your head off. And this day, I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals. And the whole world will know that Israel has an Elohim. Then everyone gathered here will know that Yahweh can say, listen, without sword or spear, because Yahweh determines every battle outcome. And he will hand... Uh, all of you over to us. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, that, see, that's our position. We had that same DNA in us. And you know why he was able to do that? Not because he just heard something. He, he killed the lion and the bear. He had that intimate time of worship with God. He just knew how to just please the Lord. And he would get into that place in the spirit of the Lord. We were singing about strength, was imparting that strength. See, that's what God is saying is, I am imparting. You're not doing this in your strength. You and God are a majority. He's imparting his strength into us. And that we can't cower. We can't back down. And, you know, or, 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 or feel so indifferent. Oh, this is like, you know, like, oh, brother. I'm telling you, I'm going to slap you if you do that. Because we, I'm ta- we can't do this any longer. I'm I'm so concerned about us. We have got to just say, I am, I'm, Lord, I'm falling hard after you like that deer that panteth after the water brook. So my soul, oh God, longeth after thee. See, that's what God is saying. God is saying to us, come on, follow hard after me. I have so much. Stop limiting me. I'm the God that's of limited ability, limited, limited opportunities. And again, you, you know, like it says here, we're not, we're not in fighting with a sword, you know, but it's like, devil, I'm going to cut your head off with the word of God. But you know what's really interesting? I've looked it up in the Hebrew Bible thing. He threw the stone and hit the forehead. What's the area that the enemy is always attacking us in? It's, it's battlefield of the mind. And that Hebrew word is mesach, and it, it means stubborn. And he took that, the word of God, and he, he said, the very thing you're trying to take me out with, I'm going to take that song, I'm going to take you out with it. Just like Jael, when she put that tent peg through the enemy's head, she put it through here. She put it through the mindsets. See, we have to put the tent peg of the word of God through the mindsets of the enemy that's trying to keep us in captivity. Listen, he doesn't care if you go to church 15 times a week. He cares if you get a revelation of the word. He cares if you're, you're humbling yourself and you're not walking in sin, you're not fornicating, that you're not in sin, you're not in idolatry, that, you're not, that you're, you, know, you put everything else before Jesus and then, well, if I can fit you in, God. Uh, 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 uh. He has to come first. He has to be number one in, one in your life. And so it's really important that we get that. And so... He, it, it, and that's where the Jews, they had to wear that thing 
um, whatever that thing is called, that they had to put the word here. Remember when Sharon, I mean, uh, Karen Wheaton was here and she got that hanger and put the word <laughs> and she had it on her head? Well, we need to do that, man. Some of us need to walk around with the, she, Karen Wheaton was talking about how she was praying for her daughter. And she was praying and praying. Her daughter, you know, grew up in a church and, and fell away from the Lord and was living in sin. And, and she was just pounding heavens with the word and decreeing the word and calling those things as being not as though they were. And she came out the one day when she was preaching and she got this hanger and she made like a little helmet and she had scripture right here. And basically, in Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 8, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise up. And you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. So, so the word, the word has to be in your face. The word has to be there day and night. Like I said, I used to write them on uh, index cards. So I had the word all over the place. And so, you know, the word, it, the word is so powerful. So anyway, so when I looked up the number 5784, I, I always do that. I'd like to do that each year. In the Old Testament, 5784, when you look up that number in the Strong's Concordance, it means chaff. And the Lord is calling us into, it's no coincidence, it's a year of open door, but the Lord is asking us and he's telling us, there's a sanctification process, I want to get rid of the chaff in your life. Yeah. And there's a scripture in Isaiah 29.5, there was a lot of scriptures on chaff. It says, the multitude of your enemies that assault you would become like fine dust, and the multitude of the tyrants like chaff which blows away, and it will happen in an instant suddenly that your enemy is destroyed. So as we allow that sanctification process to take place, as we allow the Lord to remove the chaff also in our life, the hard hearts, the unbelief, the doubt, Listen, God's not against us. God's for us. So I'm, what I'm saying to you, he's speaking to me as well. It's stuff that we have to just look introspectively and say, okay, show me where I'm at, Lord, because I, I am this army. It doesn't mean you're going to have it perfect. It just means I'm moving forward and I'm not backing down. And, and listen to how it's worded in the message in, in, mess, in uh, Matthew 3, 11 and 12. I'm baptizing you here in the river, turning your old life in for kingdom life. The real action comes next. The main character in this drama compared to him, I'm a mere stage hand. This is John the Baptist. You will ignite, I mean, will ignite the kingdom of life within you, a fire within you, the Holy Spirit within you, changing you from inside out. Do it, Lord. He's going to clean house, make a clean sweep of your lies. He'll place everything true in its proper place before God. Everything false, he'll put out with the trash to be burned. Lord, do it. Get out everything false, everything that's not to be there, every lie, everything that's hindering. We submit to you, God. We yield to you and to your word. Your word has final say. I typed it out in the, in the Amplified, but I'm not going to read it. 5784 in the New Testament says it means Alpha and Omega. And, he, and that means he's the final judge. He's the eternal judge. He has final say. So we're talking about 5784, who's the open door. Then we're talking about five, uh, when you look it up in the Old Testament, it means cha. See, last year, 5783 meant to lay bare, to expose, and to uncover. And that's what God's doing, yeah. right? Even in, in the natural, in the government, right? He's uncovering stuff, even though the media doesn't want to post everything, but he's uncovering stuff. And everything that's hidden shall be uncovered in Jesus' name. And so listen to this scripture in, in, in Revelation 21, 6 and 8 in the message. He says, then he said, it happened. I am the A to Z, the Alpha and the Omega. On the beginning, I'm the confusion from, what? Conclusion, not confusion, sorry. Sorry, no, no, the enemy's the confusion. From water of life, will I give freely to the thirsty, conquerors inherit this. We're all conquerors. Yeah. Call yourself a conqueror. I'm a conqueror. I'm not a victim. And we got to get rid of this victim mentality too. Yeah. We are not victims. We are more than conquerors. You say, but I don't know. You don't know what I've been through. I, you're right. I don't know everybody's problem. But I do know that Jesus came to set the captives free. And I do know that we don't have to live as the victim because we all have a story. And we've all had stuff that's happened to us. And I, you know, when I got saved, 
I said, Lord, I am so bound by fear and so miserable. And, and they're telling me that I can live a life of freedom. And if that's true, then I'm going to do everything I can. And I, and I told the Lord, I only gave him one year. I said, I'll give you one year. And if I don't change, then I'll go back to my old lifestyle. Like he was really threatened by me. But, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you, what I did was I got the, they, they bought a Bible for me. I worked for the airlines. And a lot of the people there were saved. And they gave me, uh, and I've shared this many times, little Kenneth Hagen, little Kenneth Copeland, Jerry Seville booklets. And I mean, my faith soared. And I started meditating on the word. And then I would read it, and then I'd go pray for you. You have a problem? Come here. This is, says here I'm supposed to pray for you. Come here. And I would just start doing all that. I, I saw miracles that were unbelievable because the word of God works. Yeah. We don't have to go to school 42 years before you step out and do it. You just need to do it. And so the word turned my life around. It transformed me. And it was progressive. I'm not saying it happened in one day. But I'm not who I used to be. I, you know, you, we heard the testimony about fear and, and, and freedom that came up. I'm not who, and many of you can say the same thing. You're not who you used to be. I'm not where I want to be yet. I'm still moving forward. There's so much more that God has in freedom. But I'm going to tell you, I, I have peace. I have the shalom of God that Jesus can only give. And I'm so grateful for what he can do. And that's what he wants for all of us and the trust and the love for him. And we have to be radical in our walk with him. I'm telling you, it, you can't. You're going to be the most frustrated Christian if you're a carnal, if you're straddling the fence, if you really don't read your word, you read your word once a week or whatever, I'm telling you, you're going to get a once a week result. But it says here, I give freely to the thirsty. We're conquerors. I'll be God to them, and they'll be sons and daughters to me. But for the rest, now I'm going to say this carefully, the feckless and faithless degenerates and murderers, sex peddlers and sorcerers, idolaters and all liars, for them, it's a lake of fire and brimstone. So how many of you know what feckless means? I had no idea. I'm like, what the heck is feckless? So I looked up feckless, and it means incompetent, weak character, irresponsible, careless, unconcerned. Oh, I have it up there. Lazy, having no sense of responsibility. Well, that's not going to be me. So I don't, we're, we're not incompetent. That's the opposite of who we are. But the enemy wants you to think that. That's an ungodly belief. Oh, I've heard people say, I'm just lazy. No, you're not. That's a choice. You're not lazy. God wants to shift us. And so now, oh, I have it up there. Okay, I didn't know if I was going to share. All right, so now, you know, my message is really supposed to be on fear, but maybe that has to be a part two. But I'm going to get to it a little bit here. But, you know, they're, the, it, I mean, you don't have to be a prophet to know about the shaking, right? And they are planning for another outbreak, and they're calling it, Eris, E-R-I-S, all right? There's this mutation, and, it's, and you know what that word means? Chaos, strife, or discord. Hello? Well, that's, that's the enemy's plan and what he wants to release. So what are we going to do now? Now, I'm not, I'm, <laughs> let me just shut up, but. Um, Say it. <laughs> Say it. I am not complying to what they want to do. No way, no how. It's a demonic agenda. I'm telling you, it's a demonic agenda. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of sound mind. I am not submitting to the works of the enemy that they're planning already. We got to get the mask on. We have to get this new booster. Baloney, baloney. We all survive. And so here's the thing. It's like, wait a second, God, help me with this. Where do I have fear? Now, listen, I struggled a lot with fear. I had panic attacks. I really, so I get fear. I'm not minimizing and I'm not putting anybody down. But what set me free? The word. And I'm very careful about what I listen to. All right. I have to, you know, everything that needs to be shaken is going to be shaken. But listen to Matthew 24, 6 and 8 in the passage. Uh, yeah, passion. It says, you will hear of wars and revolution on every side with more rumors of wars to come. 
Don't panic or give in to your fears, for the breaking apart of the world system is destined to happen. But it won't yet be the end. It'll still be unfolding. Nations will go to war against nations and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be terrible earthquakes, horrible pen epidemics, and famine in place after place. This is how the birth pains of the new age will begin. So we have got to get this fear under control, and prayer is key. Prayer is key. We've got to be a praying people. We have got to be a people who knows their God. We have got to be a people that says, oh, no, no fear. You don't have any place in me. I am not aligning with you. Now, I'm not saying be stupid. You know, again, like we encourage people. If you don't feel good, stay home. I mean, that's common sense to me. We have to, like, have a thing out there and check your temperature and have, you, you know, six feet apart. Are you kidding me? Come on. Anyway, Tell us what so, you really think. So prayer, prayer is what shifts us. And so, you know, we have Cheryl Sachs who's going to be coming in December. The first, she'll be here um, Saturday and Sunday, the first weekend in December. And she wrote the book, Fire on the Family Altar. Amen. And, and about establishing prayer back in your homes. Establishing prayer in the church. Listen, prayer is the key thing that changes things. We can't be matter of fact about our prayer time. Listen, the weapons of our warfare are prayer, worship, knowing the power of the blood, decreeing the word. It's stuff that doesn't make sense to us and stuff that our flesh doesn't like to do. But that's how we develop a strong army. That's how we build ourselves up in the word of God. And so uh, an altar of prayer will crucify our flesh. So I quoted that again. I'm going to read it to you out of the uh, Amplified. 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craving and cringing and fawning fear, but he's given us a spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. Fear brings destruction. Fear paralyzes us. It's an antichrist spirit. Anything that's against the word is antichrist, okay? Anything, uh, why well, I said that, any thought process that contradicts the word of God. So fear is an inability to trust God. And the other thing that was really key for me was starting to learn about the love of God. Amen. And honestly, every time I heard about the love of God, any message on it, I hate it. I was, oh, God, here they go again. I hate that. And so, but that was what I needed for freedom because I didn't understand the love of the Father. Like, I just... You know, and I, you know, I tell you all the time when people say, oh, Papa, or, uh, you know, my daddy, you know, just, I'm still, I'm still getting better with that one. But, you know, Father God works for me. But I had a hard time with it, you know, and, but that was the thing that I needed. It's the love of God. Perfect love casts out all fear. It's the love of God. His love, knowing that he's got my back, knowing that I can trust him. He's the beginning and the end. He's there for me. If God be for me, who can be against me? He'll never leave me nor forsake me. We have access. We can come boldly before the throne room of God. See, that's the love of God, him being there for us. All right? So, so what are you meditating on? Don't meditate on, oh, I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid that I'm going to get sick. I'm afraid I'm going to. Come on. Build your, you know, we, listen, we're spirit, soul, and body, and we also have to build ourselves up spirit, uh, yeah. physically. Right. We have some nutritionists here, right? We have to build up our natural immune system. Yeah. That's really important. So, like, let's be practical, too. Don't be eating all that sugar. <clears throat> Certain people I want to look over there. And so <laughs> fear doesn't trust God, Right? Because what happens is the lie becomes more real. And, and in essence, by our actions, we think Satan's more powerful than God when he's not. He's under our feet. Read Colossians. You know, the handwriting that was written against us was taken away, you know. And so when, um, when you've been around fear so long, it becomes one with you. Like, for example, our, our, my mom really flowed. She battled with fear. So we had a fear issue all the time, you know? And so, yes, fear is a spirit, but it's also a mindset, but it's also what you're used to, right? So you become so used to it, you don't even realize how much you're operating in fear, you see? So that's why, again, yeah, I, we can take authority over. Demons are easy. It's the mindsets that have to shift. So I had to work on this and like, okay, Lord, what's you? 
what's like common logical sense. I mean, I don't want to be stupid here, but, but you know, what is it that I need to do to not walk in this fear? I mean, because I had to work at it. So if that has been a stronghold in your life, we're going to pray about that. But listen, you're going to have to apply yourself. I, I mean, listen, I love it that I just come and boom, you know, you're free. We have to do our due diligence yeah. as well. I mean, I believe in the supernatural, but I also know that what we have to do in order to build up our spiritual immune system. Amen. All right? All right. So any thought, thought process that contradicts the word of God. And I said it earlier. I mean, I was really desperate to change, and I was going to do everything that I could. And this scripture really got to me. And I would meditate on this all the time. It's in Joshua 1, 7 and 9. It says, only be strong and very courageous that you may do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe and do according to all that's written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous and then you shall deal wisely and have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong vigorous, courageous, be not afraid nor dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You have to believe that, that he's with me no matter what. So again, I'm checking my heart. Lord, where am I at in here? Am I trusting you 100%? Yeah, but you know, you got, yeah, I get the wisdom. I understand all that. I'm saying is, does the word have final say? Don't you think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, well, you know, the wisdom says that if I get Nebuchadnezzar mad, he's going to throw me into the fire. They knew that. I'm not bowing. I'm not bowing to fear. And that's, that's my position. Amen. I'm not bad. That's why I was getting so arrogant. Not a people. Listen, I, I, listen, we're all at different places. So no, I'm not, this isn't to put anybody down, but it's for us to check where we're at. So that we know how to develop and build ourselves up. And, and, and there's a fear of death. I, I mean, I get that. And so, you know, surround yourself with, with people, faith-filled people. Surround yourself. Put your armor. Just remember, faith leads. Fear drives. So always remember that. Ephesians 6.13 says, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to stand or successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day and having done everything that, crisis, that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, and victorious. See, we have to be prepared, not just, oops, oh, it's coming, you know, like I wasn't prepared. No, no, God is telling us. He's been right. warning us. Right. I'm shaking everything that needs to be shaken. I want you to be prepared. I mean, in the natural, we have to do things to be prepared, right? But spiritually, to me, that's right now is the most important thing. What are you doing to be prepared? Right, right Topi? What are we doing to be prepared? Proverbs 23, 7 says in the Amplified, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he in behavior, one who manipulates. He says to you, eat and drink, yet his heart is not with you, but it's begrudging the cost. You know what that word thinketh? Since we're in the year 5784, thinketh there means gate of entrance or door. What are you allowing in the door of your mind? What are you meditating in the door of your mind? And so, and again, that's, I don't need to be the dead horse here, but that's the thing. We, we want to know that the Lord is on our side, and I will not fear what man uh, can do to us. Well, Martin, why don't you come up here? Because Martin came up to me at the end, and he had a dream. And, and listen, there's a fear of death that we have to pray against, yeah. that you're afraid because you're afraid that you're going to die. And I get that, but, but we, at least we know where we're going to be. But Martin, come up and just share that dream real quick. Okay, real quick, I had a dream uh, the night before Patricia left for Thailand. And in this dream, it was horrific. I was somewhere on the side sleeping, and this wicked demon came over, and it was death. I fought that demon when I was fighting cancer, and I knew what it was. And it was shoving these things like black solid pool noodles down my throat to try to kill me. And I was overwhelmed by the, the ugliness and the fierceness and the, the power of this demonic being over me. And I was lying there frozen. And one word came to me in the midst of my dying in that dream. And here's the word of the Lord. Fight! 
And I literally, uh, when I swung in my dream, I felt so weak. And it represented what we do in the natural. I actually hit my wife. She woke up at that point. She said, what are you doing? Stop. I hit her twice in the arm. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. Now I'm dealing with this terror fear of this dream. And my wife mad at me because I'm hitting her in my dream. But the word fight means what Pastor Trish is talking. It's fight with the word. And that's it. We have to fight with the word. So I'm going to ask you to stand. I have a lot more here, but I don't want to. Let me just close with this. Um, well, I'll quote two scriptures. Proverbs 3, 25 and 26 in the New Living, it says, You need not be afraid of sudden disaster, disaster or the destruction that comes upon the wicked, for the Lord is your security. He will keep your foot from being caught in a trap. Amen. Psalm 27, this, I mean, I, and, and the other thing, when I was really, really, really struggling with the fear, I memorized, I, I mean, I just would meditate and memorize scriptures that had to do with fear because I needed freedom. And, and the, it's the revelation of the truth of the word that sets us free. And it says here, the Lord is my light. And we sing that song, in my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is my refuge or the refuge in the fortress of my life. Whom shall I dread? When the wicked came upon me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries, my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise against me, even in this I am confident. And, and you know, it's like the one thing. What's the one thing, oh God, that I will worship you? You know, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He's the strength of my life. You need to meditate on it. You need to picture it. You need to just see yourself when, they, when the enemy's trying to come and, and, and put sickness or put uh, destruction or fear. Oh, he's the Lord of my light, my, of my life, my salvation. Light dispels darkness. And when you meditate on that and you sing that, and it's like when, when he's trying to put sickness, COVID, Eris on you, where, though the enemy, when he came upon me to eat my flesh, the Bible says, they stumbled and fell. Yeah. Whew, Jesus. So, Lord, we are so grateful that we are people of strength. Even like he said in his dream, Martin said, he felt so weak. But in our weakness, the Bible says we're made strong. Yeah. That's when we yield and we surrender. And we allow the Spirit of God to say, God, I can't do it in my strength, but I trust you. I choose to trust you with all my heart. Lean not on my understanding. In all my ways, acknowledge you, and you shall direct my path. Listen, there's some in here that you believe you're always going to be in poverty. The Lord, I just heard the Lord say this. There's some that you feel like you're always going to be in debt and never get out of it. God is saying to you, that's a lie. That's a lie. So, Lord, we just pray that you break that stronghold right now. I'm gonna, we're going to sing this song that I love, and, and we're going to just come up to the altar and you know we're not gonna lay hands on you you know what because only god can do this stuff for us Amen. just get before the lord and say lord i'm i'm putting it i'm putting the fear i'm afraid of covid just say it just be honest i'm afraid of errors or whatever the heck it's called i'm afraid of you know not not you know succeeding whatever it is we all have had fears and i'm not saying i don't walk in i have a fear but i'm not going to let fear control me that's, that's all right. So, Holy Spirit, we thank you for your amazing love that you have for each and every one of us. God, we just thank you that your desire for us to be that army where the enemy has nothing in us. Lord, we choose to believe the power of your word. You are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are Elohim. You are Adonai. You are the Lord God, Jehovah Sabaoth. You are the Lord God of our angel armies. You are our righteousness. You are Jehovah Sinkinu, O God. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are our healer. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And Jehovah Makedesh, the one who is always there with us. You're our sanctifier. You're our righteousness, O God. You're El Elyon. You are the most high God. You are good. You are faithful. You are true. You are a deliverer, oh God. You're a man of war. That's what your word says about you, oh God. 
and you are our hiding place, oh God. Yeah. So Lord, we just ask you to uproot root systems, belief systems that have shifted us, that has caused us to be in panic mode or shame mode or unbelief mode or doubt mode or afraid. God, forgive us. And we choose to be the people of God that you have called us to be. We are that army and we will fight. We will fight the good fight, oh God, because you've empowered us to take a stand on your word. So Lord, I just take authority over every lie, every mindset. Father, where there's been hardness of heart, would you give us a heart of flesh so that your word will penetrate in our heart? And Lord, we thank you that for this very purpose, Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy.